wallpapers, and you see the new wallpapers. I mean, that, that's what it mostly makes headlines for. I mean, it's just still, that, that's not a very good sign when people just look at the wallpapers now. But honestly, I mean, I look at the news and I look at it statistically as well. You know how often it's good to be mentioned, and it's not mentioned so much anymore. If you look at it as hard as you might try to find mainstream coverage. Well, and uh, you know, to be honest, I kind of like that because that means going forward, people are not going to confuse what Ubuntu doesn't do out of the box with what Linux isn't capable of doing. Yes, I mean, this is this is the part of me that's more in charge. I mean, I, I had a, I think that's the next topic we'll run through. But uh, I mean, loads of people start to explore some other distros because they think, well, Ubuntu is changing, so I might as well try some. I might as well just look at something else that's, that would constitute a change. And see if that's better than Ubuntu, because anyway, I'm going to have to change in some way, uh, and that leads, I believe, an increasing amount of people to just kind of find out about other distros. And I'm just like saying, well, try Fedora and try PC Linux OS, and uh, uh, maybe even Magia, which you covered mm -hmm. before. I mean, Arch, try Arch for crying out loud. I mean. it scares <laughs> well, me. see again, it's something like that could have a more harmful effect uh, than a positive one, um, and with Ubuntu and. I'm going to regret saying this because there's always exceptions, but with Ubuntu, nine times out of ten, yes, I agree with Rusty. There are some areas where Ubuntu does need to, to cater better for, but as a general rule, you stick your Ubuntu disk in your PC, and you've got a working desktop. You've got you've got your basic features which you expect to see as standard on, say, a Windows machine that you just left. And this was something I discovered with a lot of the users that I've uh, installed Ubuntu for. They certainly haven't gone anywhere. Um, I think when Roy talks about um, migration from Ubuntu when they when they come to Ubuntu and uh, look at other distributions, I think that happens regardless of the of the distribution, whatever one you first settle on when you first leave that Windows environment. I think after given a given a few months or even a year, when you get a bit of confidence with the with the system, you're looking at alternatives. What else can I do? Well, I think that's a natural progression anyway, um, regardless of what you start on. Uh, certainly, any all of my users that have had Ubuntu from the off. They've not had any desire to move anywhere else because, again, we say this every show virtually. They use no machine like a toaster, and they switch it on. They want to do their email, and that's all they consider. They couldn't care less about what's going on under the hood. And as long as their uh, icons appear in the right place, and they're well, and, and that that user's never going to care about GNOME versus KDE is, or as that. They just they need to know what button do I click? Okay, that button. Okay, go away. <laughs> and this is why this is why I think it's so important to have a distribution like Ubuntu because there's one thing that Linux does lack. I mean, anybody who uses Linux, whatever distribution you're using, you know the benefits already. You've been using it for years, and I'm quite sure we wouldn't be having this conversation now if there was something fundamentally wrong with a Linux desktop, we'd all be back using Windows. But the one thing that Ubuntu does have as well is branding. And unfortunately, as much as I don't like, I dislike branding, and we, we talked earlier about the Apple fashion icon, but we need a brand in order to have a focal point for people to actually identify with Linux in the first place. If Linux is seen by the mainstream... Why do you mean? Because well, we have loads of brands all over the place. X, X, well, is, exactly. a, X yeah. is a brand. Yeah. And if, if, people, if people are looking at operating systems, they've been in the mindset of a Windows machine for probably all their computer life, um, certainly for the for the average mainstream user. Well, and what, what like what you're getting on there, I, I don't have a problem with the Ubuntu becoming the Ubuntu brand, and you know Ubuntu is Ubuntu. The thing I don't like is like you're saying we need a Linux brand. That's to me one of the problems that's been caused by Ubuntu. People. You know, they don't, they, they associate, okay, this is the most popular one, therefore this is, this is Linux. And I'm like, no, no, this is yeah, Ubuntu. They associate that there's others as well. And that's the thing. And Ubuntu being the definitive brand in the mindset of the, of the average user is no bad, is no bad thing because once they do experience it, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's probably a bit of both on both sides. But if you present news, I mean, if we look at the situation now, let's take Ubuntu completely out of the equation and uh, pretend it didn't even exist. You've got multiple desktop options for the average user, who, bearing in mind, has no interest in the operating system that's running their system. They just want to get onto Facebook. You've got multiple distros, multiple packages. You've got GNOME, you've got KDE, you've got... And it's such a confusing world that Windows doesn't even have to try to compete because the confusion alone is enough to prevent most average users from ever sticking in that live CD into the distro. Um, well, and, and honestly, that is something, that is a Linux distro I would like to see. I would like to see a Linux distro which takes, which that's their core philosophy. They take that soup and they make it 
and they introduce it to the end user in a way that it's not intimidating, it's not soup, it's a game that the end user wants to play with. That uh, that's a challenge. That's a UI challenge. But I think it could be done. But you know that that distro as of yet does not exist. That says, whoa, okay, how do you want to do things, end user, in a way that it's fun for them to want to choose? And well, I think just just very just very briefly going going back to the whole Unity thing. I think if I was to level any criticism at Canonical, and I've had a, a couple of emails in the past saying that uh, I haven't. Um, haven't been particularly hard on, on Canonical, but I think the one criticism I would aim at them was the way that they introduced Unity in the first place to the to the users. I still think while Unity was maturing that they should have had that as an optional extra and the default uh, Chrome desktop as being the standard vanilla install. Uh, well, and most of the criticisms, I don't think it's cooked yet. I think two years from now, it all those criticisms won't be valid anymore. But like you said, they should have waited the two years then. I think in the hearts and minds of, of the users that it was deployed to, I think it, Unity would have been far better accepted if that had been the way. Because people would have tried it out of curiosity. The problems wouldn't have been such big problems because the default, um, it wouldn't have been the default uh, install. So they could still use the system, they could comment on it, criticise it, and it give a, a Canonical a little bit of time to find out the rough edges and the issues that they've had without it being rejected by some rather vocal uh, sites. With that in mind, though, it still has... Uh, in my view, uh, served its purpose uh, very well, and it's it's got maybe got a long way to go in some people's eyes, but it's certainly satisfied uh, the users that I've deployed it to so far. So it's doing something right, I think is uh, is fair to say. Um, so Roy, were you going to mention something else before we? Uh, get on well, to the hopefully with Brandon. Uh, first of all, the one point I was going to make though, um, this sort of offers you loads of uh, environments and also allows you to customize things at the, the first run. It did exist before. I'm not sure it still does exist. But some of the distros you would run would give you the option of choosing a desktop environment. And I don't know how how often they do it now. I think SUSE is doing it. Mm. And Fedora some... doesn't. In Fedora, you actually have to install. You have to choose the uh, download based on what you want to have. So well, no, and, and Arch is doing that too. I think Debian's still doing that. Yeah, but so what I mean is the, the, the problem with that, the way it's done right now. It's a little bit of a soup, you know. You have to be in, an, which is why a lot of distros stopped doing that. It, it, I haven't seen it done in a way that isn't oh, one more choice. You know that that's the issue, and that's what Tim was getting at. It's like to the end user, it's one more choice. I don't want to make any decisions today. <laughs> isn't Sue, isn't Sue Studio that's got the um, that you can you can design what well, design, but you can customize your distro before you download the ISO. Um, I'm sure it's several of them. Used yeah, I'm sure it's Sue Studio I looked at. Um, there you know, the VR build, there was those things of the base in Ubuntu, there's one that's called Suzy uh, it's called Suzy what's it called Suzy Studio. Again, it's it's not I mean that's not something that would I think would entice the the average user. I mean trying to explain to and I had recently the No no it's not for the user, it's for a corporation for it. The, the, the ones who would use that would be like let's say a database company. They want to create their own distro, but they don't want to hire a person who also to make a distro. So they just want well, to. Well, now, and see, that, that's what, what Roy's getting out there. Who those distros are really aimed at is they're aimed at, like he said, a corporation or an OEM to be a turnkey solution for creating what they want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Min, 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 Min's trying to do something similar. I mean, I installed, uh, I think actually the default live CD session, if you install Min 10, it would call it something like OEM something. And it would give you an opportunity to customize things before you burn it. So they kind of made the whole thing very targeted towards OEMs, but uh, that just makes sense to me. Well, if memory serves that, I haven't got this up on my screen at the moment, but this, I, I'm sure it was Sue Studio I was looking at, was very much geared, what I saw, towards the just the normal user in inverted commas, and certainly not uh, any sort of specialist requirement or enterprise or OEM. Um, I'm gonna to have to have a look, another look at that because it's probably been about maybe about eight months since I've looked at it. A nice idea, but um, yes, we'll move on from that. And uh, I think the next topic, which is sort of related to this one, is uh, we're going to be discussing a little bit about uh, KDE and um, PC Linux OS. And I, I believe Roy would like to start off because I think he's going to say something along the lines of "I told you so" in relation well, to this. Well, one. well, we had this this guy. I, mean, I think both myself and. Uh, and Rusty, in fact, is uh, KD, and we uh, we have some chats about it before, and each time we get some giggles coming from, you know, 
he was in. Some, <coughs> not exactly giggles, but he, he was very dismissive of the desktop environment. I think he hadn't tried it sufficiently and actually customized it to fit, to fit his uh, his habits or his workflow in general. 